Yo, what is going on guys, and welcome back to another Borderlands 3 video. I know it's been quite a while since I've uploaded a Borderlands video, but I've been playing it a lot these past few weeks. I've been playing it with some friends that got into the Steam Summer Sale, and I've been having a ton of fun, especially when it comes to updating my build. I've been doing a ton of testing, a ton of experimenting, and a ton of research to see what are the best things to run on all the different Vault Hunters. So today I figured I would share with you guys my updated builds and hopefully some of you guys might find this useful. All the save files for the builds shown in this video will be in the video description in case one of you guys wants to go ahead and try it. First, let's go over Melee Amara. This build focuses on using Face Slam itself to kill most mobs. So we're gonna be scaling it with as much melee, splash, and action skill damage as possible. For your primary weapons, you're gonna want either the Blade Fury or the Face Puncher because both of these guns have a melee component to them with their projectiles, so they will be scaling with all of our melee damage. The annoying way you're going to want on both of these is slam damage increase by 300%. This is what's going to allow you to walk into a room, look at the minimap, and see all the red dots disappear. For bossing, you're going to want a stat stick like the Psycho Stabber or the Guardian Angel, preferably with the weapon damage increase by 300% after using face slam anointment. You're going to use this in combination with your fish lamp grenade to insta-kill bosses. Now your fish lamp doesn't need to be perfect, but it does have to match elements, so I do recommend farming one in each element. For your shield, you're going to want a revolter shield with the action skill start anointment, nothing new there. For your class mod, you're going to want a phase zerker. This build actually works with most other class mods. Regardless of what class mod you're going to run, you're going to want splash damage, melee damage, and action skill damage. You can also get away with action skill cooldown rate, magazine size, and even grenade damage. The one caveat to this is that if you are running driver as your class mod, then you're going to want to use a level 1 revolter with an ASC, or a face slam melee damage increase anointment so that way you can actually get the full benefit from it. When you apply the element from your action skill to yourself, you will break this level 1 shield, which will grant you the shock and rage as well as give you the ASC. And if you have this guardian rank uh, perk called the shield reboot, every time you kill an enemy you will regen your shield, so you will constantly be breaking and refilling your shield, keeping you at 100% uptime for shock and rage from your revolter. For your artifact, optimally you would want an elemental stone static charge, but you can get away with a snow drift like myself because I am crutching on this for mobility. Especially if you're not using a driver class mod, this feels really nice to use because you don't really have another way of getting around. If you're struggling with survivability, you can consider using a knife drain static charge, or you can use a auto idle snow drift. As for the skill tree, I'm going to put it on screen right now so you guys can screenshot it or copy paste it or whatever it is that you need to do. The important parts being we're getting avatar so that way we can cast our face lamp twice even though it has a little bit of an annoying delay. It should be enough to kill most things or at least make them fly away in CC. We're also going to pick up body and mind as well as clear the mind because those are the two other core aspects of our build. And that's it, you basically walk around face slamming people and they just die. And when it comes to bosses, you whip out the guardian angel, throw your fish slap, and then it also dies. The face slam damage is actually so high that for a takedown, you can even one shot both halves of Wotan with just one slam. And you can do this pretty consistently as well. The second build I have for you is a more gun-focused build. Now we're still going to be using the Blade Fury, and the reason for that is because Amara just gets so much melee scaling from her skill trees and just her kit, that there really aren't that many other weapons that I like as much as the Blade Fury for her. The playstyle of this build is using Ties That Bind, you're basically going to CC large groups of mobs, one-shot them, and move around at the speed of light. This build, because of the skill tree, which I will show on screen right now, has sustainment, which gives it a ton of survivability, and we are going to be dealing damage of every single element. This build uses the driver class mod, so this is going to apply our action skill element onto ourselves. Now once we do that, we're going to break our revolter shield, which is going to give us shock, as well as casting our action skill will give us the cryo damage ASC, our grenade is going to give us a radiation ASC, our artifact, which is unleash the dragon, is going to cause every single enemy we shoot to be set on fire, and then we are specced into infusion, so our guns will deal a percentage of corrosive. So again, to recap, you have corrosive from your skill tree, shock and cryo from your shield, radiation from your grenade, and then fire from your artifact. And because we are specced into clear the mind, 
All enemies are going to lose their resistances to elements, which means that no matter what enemy you face, you will be able to kill them, even if they are immune to a single one of those elements. The game plan is, again, pretty similar. You use a Guardian Angel with a Fish Lap to kill bosses, while you use the Blade Fury to kill pretty much everything else. And finally, the last build I'm going to cover, all credits go to Borderlands Gamer. This guy up consistently uploads Borderlands content, and he has the world record with Amara with this build. So I figured it was worth sharing, because honestly, I have never seen anything like it before, and it is a ton of fun to play, however nauseating it might be. This build focuses on the Pestilence Pistol. Now, we all know COV weapons don't have an actual magazine. They simply overheat. Now, when COV guns overheat, you do kind of have to squirt on them with your little water gun, and when you do that, it fixes them. However, when this gun breaks, it creates a giant radiation explosion, and this explosion can be cancelled and done over and over again. You're basically cancelling the repair animation by meleeing and therefore walking around causing explosions that deal millions and millions of damage. That combined with our red suit shield, which constantly permeates radiation damage around us and gives us radiation immunity, is the core of the build. So again, you're going to be using the Pestilence, you're going to initially shoot it until it breaks, and then you're going to cancel the repair animation with your melee or your action skill. You can also cancel the animation by swapping weapons, but if you remain on another weapon for too long, it will automatically repair itself over time. So you do want to make sure that you swap back into it within a reasonable time period. I also have a face puncher here with the Terror Melee Anoint. This is going to give you a chance to apply Terror to yourself, which is basically guaranteed with every single shot. Once you apply terror to yourself, your grenade anoint, which gives you damage and fire rate, will kick in. This is going to give you 35% more damage, which is strictly an upgrade from the on grenade thrown global damage anoint. However, this is honestly overkill. You do not have to do this for damage. You will see in the gameplay that I'm basically just one-shotting everything around me, even using the reload explosion damage to phase through bosses. So the only time you will use the fish slap is when you're fighting something like Seer or Himavorus, because Wotan, you can literally just stand next to him the entire time and he will just die. This is also a driver build, and I know that not a lot of people can stomach it. Honestly, the movement speed and the constant explosions, as you can see from the gameplay, make this build pretty hard to control, honestly, to navigate, but it is super fun. The reason we're using driver is because we want to have some movement because we're not using a snowdrift, but mainly we want to match our fish lap element to our action skill element because we're using an elemental projector. Now we are basically going to have radiation on top of us permanently, so this is always going to boost our radiation damage by 129%. But if we apply our action skill element to ourselves, like say corrosive, we will deal 129% more corrosive damage, and that counts our grenade. So our fish lap is suddenly going to be doing over double the amount of damage it was doing before. And that's basically the build. You walk around and constantly cancel this animation to kill everything around you. You want to make sure your action skill element and your fish lap match elements so that when you throw it holding the guardian angel it will just explode thanks to the damage boost of elemental projector. If possible, you also want to use static charge. Because we are specking into splash damage and melee damage in our skill tree, we can kill pretty much anything with the face puncher as well. And so those are the builds. Again, shout outs to Borderlands Gamer. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Like I said, all the save files will be in the video description in case you guys want to go ahead and try them out for yourselves. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a like as it really does help me out and subscribe. Let me know if you guys would like to see Wonderlands builds as well as I have been working very hard on those too. And yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.